How are you guys doing? Finally, the final part of our tournament review series. We are down to the final three in this $22 Super Tuesday MTT early edition, I guess. First place, 3.2k down below. We are guaranteed 1.7k at this point, trying to move up them ladders. We are in prime position to take this down. 18 big band stack, 28 big band stack. Pretty good position. We've been abusing these guys for a while now. So let's finish strong and check out the final hands and see if we can take down this tournament. Once again, just raising strategy, you red champs, and we got a fold. 10 5 off on the button, I like I like the open. We keep on the regression. And just a fold there, we swift off, we open. There will be like a lot of opening and folds going on, I guess. Now, um, here, I think King Ace flops really well, and that's the reason I didn't do anything. I wouldn't mind just jamming it here. No, uh, yeah, I think just jamming is fine as well as checking. And he bets flop, we have an easy call, he bets turn, we get a call again. And ace on the river now, and he checks, and I guess I take my check back at this point. He has 8-9 off. Surprised he didn't fire up out the third bullet, I might have fewer called him, even though he blocked 8-9. But yeah, I really think this is a card that you should bluff, queen check out there. His ace check of hearts could go for a small value bet. And yeah, I wouldn't be hating that. 15 big bad champ, king turn off. Um, might actually be nice with some Chang ranges I didn't know in this position, and I think I just fold here, and that is good in my opinion. Um, we really don't need to push like this spot right now. We are in a really good spot. We really enjoy him being short when he is still in, and we can abuse him much more when he's around with 15 bigs. And yeah, so I don't think we need to make these calls. This is a spot I should just bet one, the third part and take it down. Oops. And if you do not take it down, well, we get him next time. So I don't, I don't like to check back. Did I try to get the showdown here? Lose to queen nine, yeah. Too bad. Get the walk with the king three. Um, limp part here, we join him. I think that's fine. It's kind of weird that he does this limping thing, this is the first. So I really didn't want to raise and like, be confused. And he also only had 16 bigs. King queen now, easy raise call for 15 bigs. And we do stack out on the ace nine. Pretty nice stuff. I mean, he will be chairman like King 10 suited. Obviously, Ace 9, you know, we are, play, we are flipping versus that. And if you look at this, I mean, we have 45% equity. And we only need to have uh, 42. We need to have 42% equity. Quite, quite a lot here. But yeah, there will be hands that we are dominating as well. So, pretty easy call. And now we are down to the heads up match. Guaranteed 2.3k. Playing for 3.2k. You know, big heads up match here to finish this one. We have a really good chip lead. So, let's see how we do. Starts off with the min race. I don't like, mind the call, no I three bet. I think or oh, oh, three bet. Both options should be fine. Not like the heads up expert, but yeah, played a couple. Should be doing good enough. Big C bet sizing. I think we should just throw this into the muck. And yeah, start two and a half xing. He has been folding a lot to our raises. Maybe due to ICM, but we don't know that yet. So I will just start my heads up strategy with a with a lot of raising. And if our opponent starts like three betting a lot, if you don't feel comfortable anymore, I will just switch over to Olympic strategy. But usually I think running a raising strategy is really good. Raising it up here with the queen 10. And as you see, he has been folding a lot already. Check set seven, not of one of these hands that we could easily three bet. And yeah, we just gotta fold to the C bet now. So yeah, I, I don't hate like these type of hands. These days I'm just turning into three bets. Instead of um yeah, letting them. Easy bet here with the flash draw. He calls. I think the 8 is a pretty bad card, so I just like a check. Um, you know, his 8 9 got some equity. Queen 9 got there. Um, a check is not folding now. A 10 is not folding necessarily. 10 9, 10 8, you know, check 8. Um, if we bet turn there, we have, definitely have to triple barrel off here. And yeah, I don't think that's necessarily good. And also, we were abusing this guy pre already, so. Where I push all these little edges, no need to triple bear bluff there. We go for the 3 bet now with the 3 turn off, I think that's fine. Um, yeah, we cannot really call, we could just fold as well. Um, we would be 3 betting a lot for 3 bet this, but we can just abuse them further, or like even more. Check 9, we check back here. Cannot go for 3 streets, betting turn now. And checking back that river, beating the 9 10. You know, got some nice value down the turn. Um, I think we want to check by river because he can have threes, he can have better checks. So I feel like it would be a little too thin. Just get the walk with the queen 10. 7 5, raise again. Look at this, how much he's folding. Fold, raise call. Find the c bet. 
Oh, a little big, could go slightly smaller. And you get raised, just marking our hand. Let I walk from him. Does 10 be raised? I think it's fine to raise any 2 on the button, never sim. Once again, I would like a C bet here. I mean, we can C bet like almost 100% with sim. And yeah. Deuce 10 off is like not the worst hand. We do not have any showdown value, now with the small bet, we just have to fold. We can make him fold all of his ace, a, a, x pre. Another 3 bet, you know, look how much he's folding to 3 bet. Certainly good for me to do that a lot. Queen 5 off, another hand that we could 3 bet. Like, I ran a 3 bet Queen to 5 off, then like 10 deuce off, obviously. We got the Queen blocker on, also. It's a little bit of a better hand, at least. And a bunch of folding, 2.5 extra cards. We fluff an open ender, it's kind of weird. Um, once again, we could just bet. I wouldn't hate like the check back either, trying to read us our equity. So he checks it to us twice, and now we bet turn. I really don't think this doesn't make that makes too much sense. I mean, we do wrap like a nine um, or like an eight, then we bet now on the turn. Um, it's kind of weird, but like there's so many draws out there that he will just call again and. We only really push him with some like weak ace axe and yeah like even a 10 he might not be folding given how he's been playing even though deciding he should be folding it though but they also expect to lead a 10 in a lot of his draws so i don't think we want to be bluffing here and yeah that's the case so yeah i think we should just give up there and try to hit on the river three so we're going to check three we get four bet and now we have to fold i think that was fine as well let's can steal the race just a bunch of walks right now and there we have the spot, so that's pretty interesting now. It's the final hand of the tournament. And we have the ace nine and we raise it up and he goes for us a three bet. Um what's this what's about the sizing? It's like two and a half x, two point six x, and I decide to go for the four bet. I mean we got an ace high. For 38 big blinds, I'm actually not sure if we want to be stacking off here, so I wouldn't hate just calling this now. I mean, we have seen him fold a lot to our races, so I think we really, really push. Like, it's really not necessary to get it in here for 38 big blinds, that's what I'm getting down with. Obviously, Ace 9 doesn't play that well post drop, um, but yeah, it just doesn't seem like the spot where we want to be like 4 bet calling it. Actually, 5 bet calling, right? I mean, if you put out a race, he's 3 bet, 4 bet, I guess 4 bet calling. And yeah, once you fall bet, we need to have around 32% equity, which we have a lot. So we definitely have to call, but I think we should just call pre. Well, no matter what, we bink at 9, and he had pocket 3, so we made the hold and shipped this entire tournament for 3.2k. Um, as you might have seen already in the highlight that we uploaded like a month ago, six months ago, man. It's a pretty old one. It's a pretty old one. Um, actually, looking back at my play, it wasn't that bad. I think we did like some sizing mistakes. Um, some unnecessary, unnecessary stack offs here and obviously some as we've seen like in the early stages as well of this tournament like if you look back at the first part we definitely folded like a ton you know uh didn't defend the big blind wide enough and st stuff like that and then as we went deeper i remember that i was only one tabling at the time and you really realize how i like started to play much better and obviously everybody knows that you know the less tables you play the more focused you are or the better focus you can, or the more you can focus on this table. Um, so this is something we shouldn't be forgetting as well, that um, be careful that you do not play that many tables. You know, if you fire up 12 tables, even though your ROI goes up, obviously it uh, goes down because you make less per table, you make more overall. But yeah, we really have to find this fine line between like still being focused when losing like a slightly bit of, uh, like getting more EV through playing more tables even though our, our, our ROI goes down a little bit. But yeah, it was a good run, guys. It was, the, it was one of the bigger cash I had on the stream. And also, like, from a while ago, you know, I had, like, the $11 bounty builder ship, but that was certainly a nice one. Helped me a lot. Kept me motivated. And, yeah. This was actually a shorter part now to end the series. Um, I wasn't that great with managing the hands that we played. But I hope you really enjoyed it nonetheless. Um... Please, once again, for the last episode of this, let me know any feedback. If you enjoyed the series, should we more, do more of these type of videos? This was new to me. Uh, I think I've never did a hand history review on stream before or for YouTube. Uh, back in the days, I did like a small one through move when I didn't know how to play it that much. And yeah, 
I hope it was nice nonetheless. Obviously, we'll try to keep on improving on this with all the feedback I should have gotten now with the last videos. I will certainly read through them and see what I can do better. So, thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button if you did enjoy the series. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well. There will be more content, maybe more strategy content. I will see what the feedback looks like. Enjoy the rest of your days, guys. Good luck on the grind and chips and tournaments. Peace out.